Hello everyone, welcome to GPAT 2021 Physiology Questions Answer Explanation. This is my channel wherein you find all pharma related videos and there are around 18 GPAT related videos are there. If you like the video content, do subscribe. Let's get into the class. Now, this is the question. Uh, there are a couple of match the following type of questions uh, which are easy to answer. Let us understand this one. So, you have one column wherein you have certain terms are there and the meaning of the terms are given in the other column. Let us understand each and everything. Apoptosis is a kind of programmed cell death. When a cell is infected with virus or when cell gets an irreversible damage, it undergoes a programmed cell death and that process is known as apoptosis. Whereas necrosis also results in cell death but it is because of external trauma or external injury then it undergoes a process called as necrosis. Now anaplasia, neoplasm. Neo means new, plasm means cell multiplication. Neoplasm results in the re, uh, cell mass which are nothing but tumors. Whereas in anaplasia, ana means without cell multiplication or lack of cell differentiation. No differentiation will be there. So this is what all these terms indicates. Now so apoptosis, look at this tightly regulated intracellular program in which cells are destined to it, it is given as day but it is cells are destined to die so apoptosis indicates this one whereas necrosis indicates a progressive degenerative action of enzymes and this also results in cell death one apoptosis is programmed one necrosis is because of external trauma now neoplasm abnormal mass of tissue neo means new plasma means cell multiplication anaplasia means cells lack the differentiation so one is with two so this is the answer b second one necrosis is related to one whereas c anaplasia means lack of differentiation whereas d neoplasm means abnormal mass tissue this is what forms tumors so all these are related to physiological terms moving to the next one now, a condition in which there is severe loss of extracellular fluid due to hemorrhage, diarrhea, severe vomiting or sweating followed by shrinkage of blood volume, reduction of venous inflow to heart, reduction in cardiac output and fall in blood pressure is known as. See, all of them are related to shock. Shock is a serious condition when the body tissue do not get enough amount of blood circulation or blood supply, that condition is known as shock. Now, it is depend upon various conditions. Now, look at the above description. So, this is the keyword. Shrinkage of blood volume. When blood volume is reduced, what is that called? Emia. Emic means blood. Vol means volume. Hypo means shrinkage of blood volume. So, shrinkage of blood volume means hypovolemic shock. So, the answer is this one. Anaphylactic shock occurs when there is a severe allergic reactions are there. In sometimes when penicillin is given, people will get hypersensitivity allergic reactions and that is because of immune mediator related uh, circulatory collapse and that is called as anaphylactic shock. Septic shock occurs when there is severe infection, microbial infection or sepsis is there, it occurs. Cardiogenic shock when heart is not able to pump enough blood, circulatory collapse occurs and that is called cardiogenic shock. So this above description is about hypovolemic shock reduced volume of blood and that is what results in shock moving to the next one total number of facial bones in human adults see there are 14 facial bones are there let us see them so there are two nasal bones two lacrimal inferior nasal concha two palatine two zygomatic two maxilla two and there is one mandible and one vomer is there now look at them see you need to understand this part the top one of this nasal bones nozzle bones whereas the the bottom one these are called as inferior nozzle concha and the septum is known as vomer septum is the single one in between you have certain bones known as palatine bones these two and uh, the cheek bones are known as this one zygomatic bones and after that upper jaw is made up of two bones they are known as maxilla whereas lower jaw is made up of only one bone that is mandible so totally there are 14 facial bones are there Moving to the next one. Now, which of the following plexus is a part of CNS in the brain and consists of capillaries, ventricles and ependymal cells? Now, let us understand. Plexus is a network. 
the general word plexus means network of either blood vessels or nerve fibers or nerves so both of them anything is known as plexus in fact plexus means braid in latin plexus means braid braid <coughs> excuse me braid is nothing but a network it could be either made up of blood vessels or it could be either made up of nerves now the plexus there are four options are given now out of four three of them are made up of nerves like celiac plexus cervical plexus brachial plexus all of them they are made up of <coughs> excuse me they are made up of nerves so depending upon the area they are named celiac plexus will be going to abdomen these nerve connections will be reaching to abdomen <coughs> Whereas cervical plexus will be reaching to neck region, whereas brachial plexus reaches to uh, shoulder region. So all of them are made up of nerves, but only exception is choroid plexus. Choroid plexus is made up of blood vessels, and this choroid plexus is present in CNS, and that is what covers the ventricles, ependymal cells, and everything. So in this question, the question is about this one, choroid plexus. In fact, ependymal cells are responsible for the formation of cerebrospinal fluid. And that is made up of extensive plexus of blood vessels which are present in CNS. You can see it here. This is what is choroid plexus is. See, it is formed by invaginating of vascular pyometer. Pyometer is one of the layer which is covering our brain. Like dura mater, pyometer, arachnoid mater are there. So, pyometer invagination results in this choroid plexus and it becomes highly convoluted and it appears like sponge like structure. See, the ventricles, it gets into the ventricles and produces cerebrospinal fluid. So, choroid plexus is present in CNS and that is responsible for the formation of CS, CSF, cerebrospinal fluid. The answer is choroid plexus. Moving to the next one. Now, See, permeable glycoprotein, P glycoprotein is highly expressed on. See, this is very important because this acts as a kind of efflux pump. Now, understand this word. Efflux pump means if a cell is there, cell has got certain pumps are there. The job of these pumps is the intracellular contents will be thrown out of the cell through this pump. And they are known as efflux means sending out. Now, this efflux pump is responsible for resistance to a lot of drugs like for the case of methotrexate, a, a cancer healing drug, cells, the cancer cells will increase the expression of this efflux pump and the drug is thrown out of the cell and that is how they will get resistance. But this efflux pump is highly expressed in intestine. Intestinal cells have got high amount expression of efflux pump that is P glycoprotein. Now see, this is about this. Superficial columnar epithelial cells of ileum and colon, both of them parts of intestine. So, P glycoprotein efflux pump is highly expressed at here. Not in lungs, not in pancreas, not in heart. But in certain amount of efflux pumps are there in the tissues, but highly expressed in intestinal cells. So, the answer is this one. Moving to the next one. Now, again, the total number of amino acids in human insulin. Total number of amino acid in A and B chain. Now, human insulin has got two chains, A chain and B chain. A chain has got 21 amino acids, whereas B chain has got 30 amino acids. Totally put together, there are 51 amino acids are there. So, the answer is this one. Moving to the next one. See, the size of aqueous filled pore is. Now, you need to understand this. When you see the cell, cells has got a lot of ion channels are there. Ion channels will be forming like this. So their job is to allow ions like potassium, sodium, chloride and all of them. All of them has got ionic charge and this pore is made up of aqueous pore. Aqueous means water. So through this pore the ions will be getting inside the cell. You have different channels are there like this. There is a separate potassium channel, sodium channel, chloride channel. All of them are aqueous filled pore. So the diameter matters because through which these ions, only these ions can pass, not everything can pass, but it ranges from 4 to 10 angstrom units. So the question is about what is the size of this particular pore, uh, what is the diameter of the pore, it ranges from 4 to 10 because there are different kinds of ions are there and it is ranges from 4 to 10 angstrom units. Moving to the next one. <coughs> Now, hemophilia is a clotting disorder caused due to reduction of quantity or activity of which of the following clotting factors. 
Now see, vitamin K is very much essential for clotting. It results in general clotting disorders. Clotting factor 4 is nothing but calcium. Whereas clotting factor 8 deficiency is what results in hemophilia A. Clotting factor 9 deficiency results in hemophilia B. Hemophilia A is much more severe condition or serious condition than hemophilia B. So what happens is when there is an injury occurs, the damaged area, through the damaged area, bleeding will occur. Now the vessel constricts and clotting factors are activated immediately. In normal condition, natural clotting factors help to form a platelet flow. Initially a platelet plug is formed and after that, because of clotting factor activation, a fibrin meshwork will form and which will block this damaged area. So this is the normal condition. In case of hemophilic condition, a weak platelet plug is formed and fibrin, incomplete fibrin occurs and because of that, see, look, you can see here, it is not complete meshwork formation. There are still leaks are there through which bleeding occurs and this is what hemophilia is. In case of hemophilia A, it is because of clotting factor 8 deficiency. Moving to the next one. Now this is about metaplasia. See, conversion of pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium in chronic bronchitis or bronchiectiasis. Bronchiectiasis means bronchial cell dilation, bronchial cell changes. So, in, in lung metaplasia, pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium is converted to columnar type epithelium. So, what is it called? What kind of metaplasia is called is the question. Now, let us understand. The word metaplasia means a reversible change in which one adult cell type is replaced by another adult type. So one cell type is completely changed to another cell type and that condition is called as metaplasia. It is named according to which cell type it is changed. In this case, a pseudo stratified columnar epithelium is changed to columnar type epithelium. So this is called as columnar metaplasia. In squamous metaplasia, other cells are turned, converted to squamous cells. In osseous metaplasia, cells are converted into bone type of cells, hence it is known as osseous metaplasia. Whereas, when cells are turned into cartilaginous one, it is called as cartilaginous metaplasia. Now look at the question. The question itself says, a pseudo-stratified columnar epithelium is changed to columnar type epithelium and this is called as columnar metaplasia. Moving to the next one. <coughs> now which of the following is non-epithelial malignancy tumor? See, Tumor malignancy is neoplasm. Uncontrolled cell division is what results in cancer and there are a lot of types are there. Carcinoma, sarcoma, melanoma, leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma. Calcino carcinoma is because of epithelial cells. Sarcoma is because of connective tissue. Melanoma is again a type of epithelial cell wherein melanocyte involvement will be there. Leukemia is white blood cell cancer whereas lymphoma is lymph cells cancer. Myeloma, myeloid cells, bone, bone cells, bone marrow cells, cancer. Now, out of all of them, the nevus, adenoma, lipoma, all the three are epithelial cell malignancy. Nevus is a type of melanoma. Nevi means mole. When moles will undergo uncontrolled cell division, it results in malignancy tumor and this is related to epithelial cell. Adenoma is again granular cell, epithelial cell, cancer. Lipoma. Uh, epithelial cell underneath the lipids are there when their mass is increased it is called lipoma. So all the three are related to epithelial the only one non-epithelial malignancy is fibrosarcoma. The moment you see sarcoma it is related to connective tissue cancer. So this is non-epithelial cell malignancy tumor. Moving to the next one. Now which of the following is not a gene insertion technique in eukaryotic cell? Now, genes can be introduced with various methods like transduction, conjugation, electroporation, iontophoresis and microinjection. All of them are methods of gene insertion. Shotgun sequencing is a method of DNA sequencing. It is not gene insertion technique. So, NTA has given uh, iontophoresis as an answer but this is not true. By using ionic currents, genes can be introduced into eukaryotic cell. Shotgun sequencing is a method of DNA sequencing. So there may be a key change from NTA. So the answer is, right answer is shotgun sequencing. Moving to the next one. Which of the following microbial form listed below exhibits highest level of resistance to physical and chemical methods? 
this process the highest level of resistance you will see with spore formation so where do you see that bacterial endospore now understand this word if this is a bacterial cell bacterial cell sometimes will form a spore inside the cell and that is called as endospore whereas in certain condition bacterial cell can form a spore outside the cell like this it is called as exospore both of them are highly resistant to physical and chemical methods so this is the answer bacterial endospore <coughs> going to the next one now so this is interesting one this assertion and reason type of questions need some logical thinking now understand this assertion assertion says gram negative bacteria do not retain primary strain when washed with alcohol and subsequently strained again with secondary strain reason the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria contains lipopolysaccharides let us understand briefly about gram strain see in gram strains the bacteria is fixed on a particular plate primary strain i'm sorry primary strain is crystal violet so prime initially they are stained with crystal violet now this crystal violet color is taken and bacteria turn to blue color because of the presence of peptidoglycan which is there in cell wall so more number of peptidoglycan higher color incorporation will be there now a mordant is used mordant will fix the color and that is iodine so the uh, iodine again gives a particular amount of color and it fixes primary strain now again it is decolorized by using alcohol when alcohol or acetone is used to wash color is lost from gram negative because in gram negative in cell wall peptidoglycan levels are low but it has got lipopolysaccharides so because peptidoglycan is low the color is washed away whereas in gram positive peptidoglycan is very high the color is retained again when it is counter strained with safranin the red color occurs in gram negative whereas the primary strain is retained here so you need to understand crystal violet is primary strain iodine is mordant decolorizing is alcohol secondary strain is safranin so because of the high levels of peptidoglycan the color is retained in positive whereas low level of peptidoglycan and presence of lipopolysaccharide causes loss of this primary strain and getting this secondary strain now look at them see gram negative do not retain primary strain true when washed with alcohol and subsequently stained with again with secondary strain this is what is the normal process in case of gram negative now what is the reason the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria contains lipopolysaccharide this is true you can say either it is because of lipopolysaccharide or reduced amount of peptidoglycan it has lost the color so look at the options both a and r assertion and reasoning are true yes both of them are true and r reason is correct explanation of a right see look at this see by using alcohol wash they do not retain color so this is what is assertion gram negative by using alcohol they are losing color why because they have lipopolysaccharides but not peptidoglycan so this is the answer if you understand the concept answering such kind of questions will become easier so the option 1 is correct moving to the next one now in healing of excised or injured wound there is more granulation tissue is required granulation tissue is a kind of repairing tissue so the answer is this one thank you for watching this video if you like the video do subscribe